What is up guys, Andy Forrest, Steam Runner here. Welcome back to another video. And today I'm giving you guys my first impressions of the Hoka Clifton 9. So two runs now done in the Hoka Clifton 9. A nice easy run and a progression run. We'll go through all that shortly so you guys can see exactly how I've tested it. But really excited to get my hands on this shoe, which I should very quickly say has been kindly gifted to me by Hoka for the purpose of review. However, they have no editorial control over this video. They do not know my thoughts and they certainly will not see anything before you guys get to see it here on YouTube. The reason I'm excited about this one is simply because I've never tried a Clifton shoe before and I've had mainly good luck with Hoka shoes bar a few exceptions. So without further ado, we're gonna dive in. I'm gonna tell you guys how I've used it, technical overview, and then give you guys my first impressions. So I kickstarted testing this thing with an easy run just because it's meant to be one of those shoes for those easy day miles. And I did 45 minutes in the shoe, a very gentle uphill gradient on the way out, span around and came back downhill. Loved it, 750 per mile, had a blast in the shoe. Then I decided because at the end of that run, I had more questions than answers. Could this shoe go faster? It felt like it could. And I'll explain why later. I thought, well, I've got a progression run the next day, a small one because I'm in taper mode. I could take this one for a spin and see how it does some higher gears. So that's exactly what I did in today's run, which for you guys will have been yesterday. Uh, and I did 12 minutes uh, easy pace, 12 minutes of moderate pace, and then 12 minutes slightly faster. So just gently going through the gears, 36 minutes in total. And uh, yeah, I was really pleasantly surprised. But before we get into my thoughts, we'll go through the technical overview on this shoe. And I'll kick start by saying, effectively in Hoka's version, I went true to size because they don't do my UK size 13. When it gets to 12, it basically goes 12 and a half, 13 and a half, 14 and a half, so on and so forth. So I've got a 13 and a half and it fits absolutely perfectly. We're talking about a five, mil uh, five millimeter heel to toe drop. And from what I can see, Hoka don't disclose it, but I believe it's around 32 mil in the heel and 27 in the forefoot. And in my UK size 13, really nice, 330 grams or 11.7 ounces. And the reason I say really nice is because I appreciate I'm speaking to a very small minority of people when I'm testing UK size 13 shoes. But for me, a daily trainer normally sits in 340 to 360 grams. So for this to come in at 330 is an absolute beauty. It's lovely to have something a little bit lighter, poppier and snappier. So moving on, we'll talk about the heel counter ankle collar, tongue lacing upper, midsole and outsole. We'll start at the back here. Some good structure, not flexible at all. Gives you a nice bit of stability in the back when you slip your heel in. You see you've got this heel flare here. Something or nothing for me, I'm not particularly phased whether the shoes have them or not, but it does help sliding the foot in, I'll say that. But when you're running, you just don't notice it really. It doesn't rub on the Achilles or anything uh, and absolutely fine. Ankle collar area, nice and cut under the ankle bone. Feels really good, very, very comfortable and quite a bit of plush padding especially in this section here and around the top but as you get further down around the base uh, of the ankle collar area it's very rigid there's obviously some um plastic or something in there making the heel counter very very sturdy but overall a very comfortable and plush slip in feel tongue medium padding bordering on the plush side to be honest with you it is quite puffy at the top here but as you go down it kind of thins out but a perfect amount of cushioning over the top so that when you cinch your laces everything feels nice and comfortable and of course you've got that extra eyelet there if you wish to do the runner's knot the tongue is gusseted on the inside not the outside so Overlay footage will hopefully show it, but yet yeah, there's elastic here holding it in on the side here, but nothing on this side, but that works fine. It holds the tongue nicely, no tongue slippage left or right. Really, really nice. And a very standard lacing system, nothing fancy there, not, not doing anything crazy, just good lockdown feels in this shoe. Really, really nice. And solid laces too, didn't feel like the shoes came loose once at all. Uh, they label it as a breathable engineered mesh upper. I just go with engineered mesh upper. I wouldn't particularly say it's breathable. I've seen lighter uppers, um, but it is very comfortable. 
So in the height of summer, I can imagine, I can imagine this thing gathers a bit of sweat in it. Um, it's, it does look relatively well ventilated and it is very comfortable, but I think there are probably lighter uppers out there. Either way, it's a very comfortable upper and quite wide in the toe box as well, which is wonderful because I have a wider foot. Um, but yep, yeah, solid scores on the upper there. Very, very happy, very comfortable, fits really nicely. Compression molded EVA midsole. I think the bugbear of a lot of people uh, with Hoka. I mean, I love their midsoles and I'll talk to you about my history with Hoka shoes shortly, um, but uh, very comfortable, very nice, squishy. When you step in, you don't realize as how squishy it's gonna be until you start running, especially in the toe area. As I was towing off, I really felt a lovely sink and bounce feeling. But the platform, as with a lot of Hoka shoes on this shoe, is very wide, so it is very stable. There's a lot of, it's not a stability shoe, it's a neutral shoe, but the way this shoe is set up makes it for a, quite a stable ride from the very secure lockdown here, puffy, comfortable cushioning here, lovely gusted tongue wrapping over the top of the foot, good solid engineer mesh upper, and then a wide platform with this, um, with this, uh, EVA midsole means that it just feels nice and soft and squishy, but you're not pronating too much. So it does work really, really well and I, it just worked really, really well for me. So yeah, super comfortable, super, super cushioned, super soft and squishy. Um, yeah, durability is always the thing uh, with Hoka shoes. And then a rubber outsole placed in strategic places. You can see the patterns there on the toe area and down to the back, but everything else is exposed midsole. Uh, and we'll talk about that shortly because as I said, I've had mixed experiences with Hoka shoes mostly good but in terms of the wear and tear I often find that sometimes these can shed like snake skin quite early and then last a long time I kind of feel like this isn't going to do that but we'll see how it goes so in terms of the tech that's it so let's dive into my first impressions how did I find the shoe I flipping love this shoe let me give you a quick history about my Hoka shoes so that you guys know where I'm coming from because there's some I've tried that I loved and some that have really just been duds for me Carbon X1 first ever Hoka shoe, first ever carbon plated shoe, loved it. Carbon X2 was not a fan, that did not get many miles whatsoever, completely changed the shape and geometry of the shoe. That really ended up being geared for longer ultra style efforts. So I wasn't a fan of that at all. Uh, I had the Rincon 1, loved it. Rincon 2, too tight, too narrow, not a fan at all. Um, and again, that shoe bottomed out very, very quickly. Didn't even make it to 200 miles. The EVA just went completely flat um, in both versions. But version one, it was worth it for the miles that I got on it. I love that shoe. Uh, what else have I had? The Torrent 2 from the Trails, I loved it. But again, didn't get it to 200 miles, just kind of went flat. Um, and then I had the Mac 4, brilliant. That was the breakthrough Hoka shoe for me. Loved it, got 350 miles in it. Started to go flat then, but I kind of felt like, all right, 350, I'll take that, that's good. That's progression from what I've had in the past. Um, and then, yeah, I think, is that it? And now we're on to, oh, I've had the Rocket X as well. Really, really like that. Got 150 odd miles in that shoe, I think. Um, and then sort of retired it, not for any reason, just stopped using it because I had other shoes in the rotation. But that was a decent shoe, really enjoyed it so the main theme with my hoka shoes that i've tried is most of them i love comfortable they always fit well uh, sometimes you just don't ride particularly nicely it's just the durability and that comes in the form of this compression molded eva midsole now i've heard this year that things have been changed up it's a different formula. We should be able to get some more miles out of it, and that's great. And I've also heard stories already uh, of people putting a fair few miles in this thing, getting well over 300 already, and still feeling really good. If that happens for me, and I get the same amount of miles I did in the Mac 4, then it is a bonus because this thing is beautiful to run in. So that's my history with Hoka shoes, and it's a delight to finally get a Clifton because I've never tried them before, and it lived up to the expectations. Just that general daily trainer. I guess if you're looking at Nike's lineup, the Pegasus except I've got to say this is much, this is way better and much more comfortable as I said it just comes down to durability now again something with Hoka shoes that people can find uh, the arch area I've heard people can sometimes get blisters in the arch area it's kind of one of those shoes that either really, really works for you or it really, really doesn't. Uh, I've never suffered with that and just the whole fit and feel for me is wonderful. What struck me with this shoe in particular was how soft and squishy it was in the midsole. Just a super, oh, it was beautiful. And when I was towing off, I felt the sinking and the bounce, but with the stability of the shoe as well, like the wide base and everything, I didn't feel like I was rocking anywhere. It just felt such a nice, smooth ride. I should also say it's got an early stage meta rocker in here uh, which basically the geometry of the shoe the way it's cut so that you should land and push off nicely 
and yep, I was exactly what I felt. I felt smooth in transition and just clocked up the miles in this thing really, really nicely. And when I got to the end of the 45 minute run, I actually thought to myself, this is way lighter than a lot of my daily trainers I test. I wonder if I could put some good moderate miles in this shoe as well. Because if you follow the channel, you'll know I love a good steady or moderate run. And that's exactly why I decided to test it for a second time and put a good amount of steady miles in there. Clock 6.38 per mile, which is in and around my steady pace. And it felt really good, really smooth, perfect. Yet it didn't have the quite the pop, the transition that I guess something like the Sorkin Endorphin Speed or the Brooks Hyperion Max, some other ones I've been testing that are geared for speed days. Those things roll through beautifully and they're a lot lighter as well. Um, but for a daily trainer, this one handled it really well. And actually out of all the daily trainers I've tested this year so far if I could say like this one can do easy and moderate miles I can't think of another one that I've tested this year that I can say would handle easy and moderate as well as this thing so if you're looking for a shoe that can do both and just you know ramp up the pace a little bit the Clifton 9 is definitely an option really pleasantly surprised really really happy with it just the same old question mark over the top how long will it last if i can get 300 plus miles out of it then i will be buzzing because this will be a great addition to my rotation and this is probably basically going to go straight in for most easy runs now sprinkling a few moderates and i can imagine it will get to 100 miles pretty darn quickly so those are my first thoughts on the clifton 9 what a beauty i love it and i'd love to hear if you guys have got this shoe as well once again a massive thanks to hoka for sending it to me i really appreciate it i um, always try and be honest with these things and as i said durability for me is always the question mark i have with hoka shoes um, but in terms of everything else in this shoe it's the complete package that i'm looking for and it's going to get a ton of use in my training would love to hear your thoughts as i said it's been out for a few months now so if you've had it and clocked up a few miles would love to hear your experience in the shoe and if you've got any stories to tell with it do let everyone know down in the comments below that's it from me today guys that's my first impressions appreciate you guys sticking around to the end if you enjoyed the video please do consider giving it a like share it with your friends and of course please do consider subscribing to the channel for weekly running content i'll see you on the next one until then